Hey everyone, this is Daniel from Fauna Arena with the Nokia Asha 303. That's the flagship of uh, Nokia's new affordable range aimed towards youth and emerging markets. It is a Series 40 phone evolved to a 1 GHz processor, 3 megapixel camera here on the back, capacitive touchscreen, and uh, a physical QWERTY keyboard. The Asha 303 feels very good in the hand thanks to this uh, curved back and tapered sides plus the quite respectful yet uh, not overbearing thickness. The portrait QWERTY keyboard half is recessed below the upper screen area as if you're dealing with a slider at first glance. Overall the phone has uh, a bit chubby but very lightweight and sturdy construction incorporating some premium materials like uh, this metal cover here on the back and uh, the phone also comes in a variety of flashy colors. The top is reserved for the charging and micro USB ports as well as the standard audio jack. This uh, lock key here on the right as well as the volume rocker above it are uh, very easy to feel and press although with a bit shallow tactile feedback. The four navigational keys here below the display are set for the most used functions, call and end keys as well as uh, a music playback and messaging buttons. Considering that uh, a larger thumb covers three columns on the keyboard at once, the typing experience can't exactly be called comfortable here on the Asha 303 so there's bound to be quite the learning curve until we hit decent speeds. The keyboard also feels very plasticky and is on a single sheet so space between uh, the buttons is non-existent almost making matters uh, even worse. The travel of the keys is mostly shallow with uh, very poor tactile feedback and this cramped uh, 4 physical QWERTY is slightly curved which uh, supposedly enhances typing comfort but uh, since the size is so small you actually um, are better off with the chiclet style or island style keyboard. The 2.6 inch capacitive touch display is a first for the Series 40 line its colors seem a bit pale and brightness is about average so using it in the sun is a bit of a chore. The 240 by 320 pixels of resolution is pretty low by any standard so even on the small size the poor 154 ppi density makes uh, interface elements look pixelated as you can see. Horizontal viewing angles are pretty bad unlike the vertical ones uh, which are decent but uh, overall the display does the job. Now let's have a look at uh, how the interface looks on it. The presence of a capacitive touch screen allows for interesting combinations in the interface. For example, when you press the navigational button for messaging, a choice of tone screen keys appear, which lets you choose between texting or emailing. When you press the play key, small music player widget uh, pops up to manage your tunes and so on. These uh, big fat icons here remind of Symbian Bell styling and are very easy to press. Plus the screen is uh, pretty responsive. Overall, menu diving has been uh, reduced to a minimum compared with previous Nightmare Series 40 phones, but uh, there are still many perplexing options uh, to choose from until you find where everything is stored, especially if you come from uh, a different platform. A big disappointment is the lack of smart dialing since uh, you have to search for each and every contact that's not in your immediate call log. Despite the decent 1 GHz processor here, Series 40 doesn't support multitasking so you'll be hopping from one app to the other. Only one home screen is present, you have to divide it between uh, favorite contacts and social networking updates like here as well as other things like uh, shortcut bars, mail or message uh, sections and so on. You can actually choose what the sections uh, contain here on the home screen. 
There's also a quick access to a panel uh, with wireless connectivity shortcuts, which can be rearranged to your liking for speedy turning on and off the various radios. The main menu is uh, also pretty simple with big icons giving you access to various apps uh, or subcategories. And uh, interface elements are big enough for comfortable pressing and uh, easy choosing of uh, various options. The new 2.0 Series 40 browser of Nokia Asha 303 actually makes the most out of the smallish display with an address search field in at the top where the context menu button is as well. And uh, there's a navigational dock underneath as well for quick access to your favorites, downloads or various web apps uh, like simple games for example. Both of these uh, navigational bars go away when you're actually surfing, leaving you with uh, the full screen view and uh, transparent back uh, and forward buttons. Browser also compresses the sites at Nokia's uh, own server, so you're piped in a version that minimizes your data consumption and the pages render faster. Panning around, uh, scrolling and zooming are actually quite fluid. There's even text reflow to fit the article in the screen width for easy reading. All in all, it's a very usable browser for the screen size, uh, what we have on the Asha 303, but uh, the lack of Adobe Flash support and the crappy pixel density aren't very enticing to use for anything but uh, quick checkups. The music player now got touch controls, but otherwise uh, it keeps a very similar interface to its previous versions. It is pretty functional as it is, with uh, cover art and uh, equalizers, song categorization support, and so on. One of the few advantages when you have a thick phone is that you can fit a more potent loudspeaker in it. And the one on the Asha 303 is indeed very strong and clear. Could serve as an improvised boombox even. As you can hear. Very strong and clear loudspeaker on the back. The handset has a decent video player too, this time uh, enhanced with DivX XVD support uh, right out of the box. Uh, it plays those files up to VGA resolution. As you can see, this is uh, 640 by 480 pixels DivX video and the phone plays it uh, without a problem. You can turn it into landscape orientation. However, if the file is uh, above 700 megabytes, uh, the handset would refuse to take it for a spin. The Asha range sports the same 3 megapixel fixed focus camera in the whole lineup and the 303 is no exception. It doesn't have a flash on the back. This uh, touch interface here is decent with large buttons that make accessing the camera functions uh, easy. Most of the basics like uh, white balance and exposure adjustments are here present. And uh, also there is face recognition and uh, some effects as well as funny frames you can apply to your photos. The phone has uh, this sequence mode which allows you to take up to five shots in rapid succession. And uh, the pictures themselves turned out decent in terms of color representation, white balance measurements, but uh, quite soft and light on detail to be considered anything above average. Inside photos uh, got even softer and noise ratcheted up, as can be expected, since the camera is fixed focus. Macro shots are out of the question with the phone as well. The Asha 303 shoots VGA video at 15 frames per second, which again is nothing to write home about, but it's usable if you have nothing else uh, to capture some improvised scene with. The Nokia Asha 303 pushes the envelope of what we call a feature phone, providing an almost complete set of functions for your everyday needs. Granted, it doesn't have the rich application store that uh, even a cheap Android handset uh, can take advantage of. But there's still plenty of apps for it, including the widely popular No Social Networking Once, as well as an exclusive version of Angry Birds for the phone. 
and uh, there are only a few things holding it back like this cramped keyboard here and the lack of a GPS receiver still we get a very sturdy and colorful design a very good call and uh, loudspeaker quality as well as a Pentaban 3G radio the phone is priced between 150 and 200 dollars or euros at various retailers without the contract and uh, it's a good value for the money, especially for people who are yet unwilling to make the jump to smartphones. For them, it uh, can also serve as a whiff of nostalgia to the times when Series 40 marched uh, uninterrupted in the world. It's also a very good evolution of this lineup. When you look at uh, the direct Android competition, however, things start to turn a bit uh, iffy for the Asha 303. Phones like the Samsung Galaxy Y Pro combine also a physical portrait QWERTY with a 2.6 inch capacitive touchscreen but the QWERTY on the Galaxy Y Pro is chiclet style, easier to type on and you have access to the hundreds of thousands of uh, apps in the Google Play Store. Even better you can grab the HTC Chacha for example or the status for AT&T with uh, it's svelte design, much better pixel density and 5 megapixel camera with flash for only a tad more. All in all, the competition in this realm for the phone is uh, pretty high, especially from Android handsets. This was a video review of the Nokia Asha 303 from Phone Arena. For more information about this and other handsets, you can visit us at phonearena.com. Thanks for watching.